All right, so let's talk about another thing, tuples. All right, tuples are a type, okay? In Swift, they're really, really cool. They're basically a way to build a type out of other types by grouping them, okay? And you can use it anywhere you can use a type. A tuple can be used anywhere uh, types are valid, okay? So here's an example. I'm gonna create x, okay? This let x, x is a constant. Its type is a tuple with a string int and double. So even though tuple has the sound two in it, okay, it's not just two things, any number of things can be in a tuple, okay? So uh, x there is a tuple with string int and double. And I'm even setting it to a value, which is just parentheses, a string, an int, and a double, okay? Now, how do I get those values out of the tuple? Well, there's two ways to do it. One is to say let, and then three uh, identifiers, these are basically three local variable names, equals x, okay? And that's going to extract the three values and put them, assign them to word, number, and value, which are going to be local variables in this context, okay? Now, if you tried to say let word comma number, close parentheses, equal x, the compiler will complain because word comma number can't match a string int double tuple, okay? So this particular syntax is just putting names on the things in the tuple so you can use them. So now you could print them out. Print word, print number, print value. Word would be of type string, number would be of type int, uh, and value would be of type double. Okay, another way to do it is when you create the tuple, okay, you can name each of the things in the tuple. So here I'm letting x this time be w colon string, i colon int, v colon w. I'm giving the names w, i, and v to the things inside the tuple. I'm still assigning it, just like I did in the version above. But now, if I want to get at the values, I can just say x.w, x.i, and x.v to get at the tuple values. See the difference between those two cases? One, you're kind of naming it when you declare the tuple. The other one is you're taking a tuple that you got, and you're just extracting the values. And you can mix them. For example, I could say let word num val equal x. Even though I defined it x to have w, i, and v, I could ignore the w, i, and v and instead just use the, the syntax from the top, okay, and call it word, num, and val, okay? So tuples are cool because you can return multiple values from a function with a tuple, okay? So we know that return values are arrow and a type. Well, since a tuple can be a type, you can go arrow and a tuple and return values, yeah. No, so the question, can you ignore it in some of the values? Absolutely you can if you use underbar. Underbar in Swift is the universal, I'm ignoring this character, okay? So you can put underbar in there. Um, so yeah, so here I'm returning this uh, tuple, weight, and height, obviously, uh, straightforward how we do that. So tuples are perfectly valid return values, okay? So you can return multiple things from functions. All right, range. So range um, is quite important, actually, in Swift. Uh, it's essentially just two endpoints, okay, of anything that can be represented consecutively, okay? So range, the type is generic, like array. So you can have a range of ints, you can have uh, a range of indexes into something, or whatever. Uh, it really conceptually just has two things, a start index and a an last index, okay, end index. Um, an array's range, okay, if you wanted to get an array, a range into an array, it would be a range of ints because an array is indexed by ints. So you would have a range of ints, in fact, um, you know, you, there are methods in array where you can say, give me this range of yourself, and you specify it as a range. Um, a string's range is not int, okay? If you want a substring, you cannot use a range of ints. It's actually a range of string.index, which is a different type than int. And you're gonna need to read all about that uh, in the assignment, okay? One of the sections in the assignment is indexing into arrays in the reading assignment, and you're gonna to wanna to understand that, okay? It's a little bit complicated. I'm not gonna spend lecture time, but it's, I'm pointing it out to you so that you go look at it, okay? Now, there's special, just like with optionals, we got question marks and exclamation points, there's some special syntax for ranges, okay? Which is this dot, 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 and dot, dot, less than sign. You see them right here? Okay, the dot, 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 dot less than sign, okay? Um, this means a range right here, okay, that goes from two to three. This is a range that goes uh, from two to three, but does not include three, okay? So that would be just the number two right there, okay? Now, see this four right here? 
four loops the, in Swift, uh, all are four in like this. So if you wanted to go for i equals one, two, ten, i plus plus or whatever, you would do that with these uh, ranges like this, okay, for i in 27 to 104 or whatever, okay? And you can make ranges that um, are more powerful than just direct ranges. I can't talk about that really time-wise, but again, check the uh, uh, documentation and you'll see uh, how to do ranges, okay? So that's when you see that. Okay, let's talk about data structures in Swift. I'm talking about classes, structs, and enums. Okay, you've already seen them in the example. Um, I'm going to talk about the similarities and the differences. So what's similar between class, struct, and enum? They're declared the same way, right? Just a keyword, the name of the thing, and then curly braces. They okay, all sort of like that way. Um, they're also similar in that they can also have properties and functions. Okay, so you can have functions on them, and you can have properties. Enums cannot have stored properties, only structs and uh, classes can have stored properties, but enums can have computer properties. Okay, the storage of an enum, remember, is the cases. It's a discrete value thing, so it's the cases and their associated values, that's its storage. All right, um, they all can have initializers. Okay, we haven't talked much about initializers yet, we're going to get that today. Um, and so they're all allowed to have uh, initializers except enum. Okay, obviously enum doesn't need an initializer because you just set it to the discrete value with its associated values. Okay? All right, differences. One, inheritance. Okay, with classes you can inherit, structs and enums you can't. Value types, I talked about this before, okay? Structs and enum are value types, they're passed around by value. Class is a reference type, you pass pointers to it around, it lives in the heap. Okay, let's talk a little more about value versus reference. Value means that it's copied when passed as argument to a function, that's kind of obvious, but it also copies when you assign it to another variable. If I say var x equals y, if y is a value type, x will be a copy of y, a copy. So if y is an array, y might be an array, okay, and you say x equals y, and then you say x append this thing, that thing will not be appended to y, because x was a copy of y. You see what I'm talking about there? Okay, so that's a big difference with value semantics. Even just assigning them is a copy of them. A value semantic thing is immutable if it's assigned to a let variable. Okay, so if you have an array, okay, since that's value semantic, because an array is a struct, if you assigned it to a let, let x equal an array, you cannot append things onto that array, because it is immutable. Okay, same thing with the dictionary, whatever. Okay, remember the function parameters, all of them are constants, so of course you're copying them into there, you can't modify them. Uh, you, because of the way copy semantics work, Swift makes you, when you do have a struct or an enum, you have to mark all functions that might change that thing, mutating functions, with the keyword mutating. So like mutating func whatever. Okay, if that function could change that struct. And the reason for that is when Swift copies it, it doesn't want to actually make a copy, okay? It gets another pointer to it, but as soon as you try to mutate it, then it's going to have to copy it. You see? So it's a kind of a performance enhancement. So anytime you have a struct that has a function that changes the values, any of the values of the struct, you have to put mutating in front so that Swift knows that you're doing that. Okay, reference types. Okay, this is what you're used to probably. Things are stored in the heap, you have a reference to them. Those references are counted automatically. That means there's no garbage collection in Swift. All right, there's no mark and sweep in the heap. Every single time you create a new pointer to something in the heap, Swift keeps track of that and it keeps incrementing a count. And when that count goes down to zero, because maybe the last pointer that's pointing to it goes out of scope, or maybe you assign that last pointer to point to something else, nothing points to it, it immediately removes that from the heap. Okay, it predictably removes it from the heap immediately. So it's very different than garbage collection, where garbage collection is kind of going on in the background and it might collect a whole bunch of stuff from the heap all at once that's been sitting around for a while. This is predictable memory management and it's all managed for you. Okay, there's only one way that you participate in that, which is the weak and strong, which I'll be talking about later. Okay. Um, Let's see, constant pointers, okay, if you have a constant pointer to a class, obviously it's a pointer, so you're still mutating it, right? 
it's not like a struct where if I say var y equals x and then I add something to y, it doesn't modify x. If I say var y equals x and it's their classes, then if I send a message to y, it's sending a message to x because they're the same thing, right? They li that same thing lives in the heap. There's no copying. So let, all let means is that pointer is not going to change. It doesn't mean what the pointer points to won't change. Okay? Uh, obviously, so when you pass a pointer to a class uh, as an argument, then it does not make a copy, it's just passing a pointer, okay? Now, how do you know which to use, struct versus class especially, okay? Enum's pretty obvious, but struct versus class. Well, usually you're gonna choose class over struct, okay? Because it's an object-oriented program and you're used to doing it, that's gonna be fine. Struct is gonna be used for more fundamental types, okay? Things like strings and doubles and ints and arrays and dictionaries and also for drawing points, rectangles. You see what I'm saying? Smaller things that are self-contained, that it makes sense to copy by value, that you want the value semantic, that's gonna be your primary reason for choosing struct is you want value semantics when you're passing this thing around. Um, otherwise, you're gonna choose classes, okay? Anything big is almost certainly gonna use a class, all right? 